No eye has seen and no mind can truly imagine what God has in store for us in heaven. Join me on this inspiring journey through the Bible as we discover 10 thrilling facts about heaven. Hi, this is Dustin with Hope Through Prophecy. If you would like to better understand Bible prophecy and be prepared for the soon return of Jesus, please subscribe and make sure bell notifications are turned on to stay connected with me through text alerts, a free online Bible study course, a church near you, and more. Just text HOPE to 50597. Heaven has captivated the imaginations of Christians for thousands of years. However, most Christians don't fully understand what the Bible actually says about heaven. What will heaven be like? Will we have real bodies there? What activities will we be doing in heaven? My hope is that these 10 facts will not only reveal to you the beautiful realities of heaven, but that they will inspire you to be there someday. Now let us begin our journey. Fact 1. The New Jerusalem will be on this earth. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. John the Revelator, while he was exiled on the Isle of Patmos, received a vision of the capital city of heaven, the New Jerusalem, descending to this very earth. What an honor this will be! God has chosen our planet as the headquarters for this eternal kingdom. Yes, the very place that was degraded by sin, filled with death, pain, and corruption, will be recreated and transformed into the beautiful Eden home that God originally planned for us. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. This new earth will be a testament to God's redeeming power, and the righteous saved will be like shining jewels in His crown. On that day, the Lord their God will save them as the flock of his people, for like jewels of a crown they shall shine on his land. We will now discover the Bible's glorious description of this great city. Fact 2. The city's foundation will have all the colors of a rainbow. The Bible describes the twelve foundations of the New Jerusalem with stunning detail. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. Amazingly, unlike diamonds for example, these twelve gems are all anisotropic, which scientists have just recently discovered reflect all the colors of a rainbow when exposed to pure light. But the Bible doesn't stop there. It even describes the streets, gates, and walls of the New Jerusalem. The streets of this great city are made of pure gold. The street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. And yes, the heavenly city does indeed have pearly gates. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each of the gates made of a single pearl. These massive pearly gates are embedded into a colossal wall. He also measured its wall, 144 cubits by human measurement. The wall was built of jasper. These powerful walls are the equivalent of 216 feet high and made of solid jasper. You may be shocked to learn the size of heaven's capital city. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth, and he measured the city with the reed. 12,000 furlongs. The city will be shaped like a perfect square and will have a circumference of 1,500 miles, roughly the size of the entire state of Montana. There will be plenty of room for all of God's people to gather there. And wait until you see what is inside of this city. Fact 3. The tree of life will give healing to the nations. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. You will notice that this is the same tree of life that was in the original Garden of Eden. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. 
the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Adam and Eve were shut out from this garden after they sinned, so they would not eat of this tree of life and live forever as sinners. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. But now this glorious tree of life is located in the middle of the heavenly city and produces a different fruit for every month of the year. Its leaves contain sustaining healing properties, and all who eat of it will have eternal youth and life. This brings us to our next fact about heaven. Fact 4. There will be no more sin, pain, or death. The Bible gives us this wonderful promise, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Sin was brought to this earth by Satan himself after his fall from heaven. The Bible defines sin as the breaking of God's law. God is love, and if he would have destroyed Satan right away, then people would obey God out of fear rather than love. In his perfect wisdom, God has allowed sin to run its course so the entire universe can see the results of sin and decide for themselves which master they will follow, Christ or Satan. But God has a plan to completely eradicate sin from the universe, and this plan will be fully realized when this old earth is made new. But nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And what about those who have tragically become deaf, blind, or paralyzed? Fact 5. We will have perfect, indestructible bodies in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. There will be no more death, aging, and sickness. We will have perfect, immortal bodies. Maybe you have friends or loved ones who are blind or deaf. Listen to this thrilling Bible promise. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Do you know someone who can no longer walk? The Bible says, the lame shall leap like a deer. What a thrilling thought. We, along with our loved ones, will have perfect, eternal health. But will we actually be able to identify each other in heaven? Fact 6. We will recognize each other in heaven. Yes, we will know and recognize each other in heaven. We will have the rest of eternity to spend with each other. Imagine talking to David about his showdown with Goliath, or asking Daniel what the lion's den was like. Imagine listening to your guardian angel describing all the times he protected you. The Bible describes how we will recognize and visit with these heroes of faith. Many shall come from the east and the west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Some people wonder if we will have actual human bodies in heaven. The answer is yes. The Bible says that Jesus will transform our lowly body to be like His glorious body. And we know from the Bible that Jesus has a real human body. See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. In heaven, we will not only have real bodies, but we will do real things, as we'll see in just a moment. But what about animals? What will they be like in heaven? Fact 7. Animals will live at peace with each other. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion, and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. Just imagine being able to sprint with the cheetah, crawl through the jungles with the tiger, and get into playful wrestling matches with the powerful lion, all without fear of danger or pain. They shall not hurt or destroy, and all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Humans and animals will once again live at peace with each other, the way it was meant to be. So what kind of activities will we be doing in heaven? Fact 8. We will build homes and inhabit them. Contrary to popular belief, 
we will not just be floating around playing harps all day in heaven. We will have real activities that will be both productive and rewarding. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. And mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. You will get to build your very own home in heaven, tailor-made to your exact specifications. This will be your country home. Jesus describes the city home that is already being prepared for you. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Friend, don't miss out on this glorious future that Jesus has prepared for you. What else will we be doing in heaven? Fact 9. We will explore the wonders of the universe. In heaven, all of our senses and abilities will be strengthened. Not only will we have unlimited time, but our ability to learn and acquire knowledge will be greatly enhanced. What would you like to do? Study the rarest species of exotic animals? Go right ahead. They will not hurt or destroy. Discover new varieties of plants and vegetation? Feel free. Isaiah says the desert will blossom as a rose. Explore the wonders of distant galaxies? Be my guest. I believe we will soar to worlds unknown. What about you? In the comment section below, please share what you would like to do in heaven. Personally, I look forward to exploring new galaxies throughout the vast expanses of the universe. Maybe you can join me. Now for our final fact about God's heavenly kingdom. Fact 10. We will worship before God's throne. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself shall be with them and be their God. The greatest part of heaven will be that God Himself will be with us. This has always been God's desire. From the Garden of Eden, where God spoke to Adam and Eve in the cool of the day, to the ancient sanctuary service, which God gave to Moses so He could dwell with His people, to Jesus Christ coming to this earth, Emmanuel, God with us, and even to the present day where the Holy Spirit leads and guides us, God has always desired to be with us. Finally, in His kingdom, human beings will be reunited with our Creator, never to be separated again. And yes, we will all meet together to worship before God's throne, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. I can just imagine that day, standing before the throne of God, joining my voice in one accord with all the host of heavenly angels and all of the redeemed, singing praises to our Creator. What a thought! I hope you will be standing next to me, friend. It is now time for the most important part of this message, how you can be certain that you will be in heaven. The reality is, not everyone will make it. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Sin, which is the breaking of God's law, will not be allowed into heaven, and anyone who continues to sin will be destroyed with it. God will tell them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So how can we get rid of this sin which separates us from God? If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, friend, if we simply accept the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross, confessing and forsaking our sins, then He will accept us and we will be saved. God will forgive our sins and give us the power to live the holy life that He requires. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. In fact, the Bible gives a clear description of those who will be admitted into heaven. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Yes, the lives and actions of those who are saved will testify of their faith. They will obey God because of their love for Him. 
Friends, today we have learned some thrilling facts about heaven. But the truth is, we can't even imagine how spectacular heaven will really be. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. Dear friend, nothing in this world is worth missing out on heaven. Jesus is inviting you today to be with Him in that eternal kingdom. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. If it is your desire to be with Jesus in heaven someday and would like to accept his invitation to be your Savior and Lord, just write in the comment section below, Lord, I accept your invitation. Amen. I hope to meet you someday, friend. If not on this earth, then standing next to each other on heaven's sea of glass. I have created a playlist of videos specifically to help you prepare for heaven and be victorious in these last days. I highly encourage you to click the link below to watch this playlist. And make sure you are subscribed to this channel with bell notifications turned on so you don't miss any new content. And please like and share if you have enjoyed this video. Most importantly, friends, Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith.